Hello everyone, welcome to the Curious Aviator channel. We have already discussed about the top 5 commercial aircraft manufacturers in an earlier video. Do check it out if you haven't already. Now let's check the manufacturers of the engines that power these mighty aircraft. Let's begin. Number 1. We have General Electric Aviation. General Electric Aviation is also known as GE Aviation, which is a part of the larger General Electric Group from the US. This manufacturer currently has the largest market share in the turbofan engine market. The company came into existence back in 1917 and since then has been producing great engines. Some of the most famous engines can be seen on large white bodies such as the humongous GE90, found on the Boeing 777. Then the highly efficient GENX, found hanging in pairs on the 787 and in quadruplets on the 747-8. The GE90's composite fan blades are also an example of modern art and are also kept in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Yep, these four feet fan blades are that beautiful. The newest of them all, the GE9X, is a worthy successor of the GE90, which has become the largest jet engine ever produced with a fan diameter of 134 inches or 340 centimeters. And this beast will be powering the upcoming Boeing 777X. GE has also produced the famous CF6 engine, which powers the variants of the Airbus A300. A310, A330, Boeing 747, Boeing 767, DC-10 and MD-11. The CF-6 also transformed into a joint venture with Safran known as the CFM International as we shall see ahead. At number 2, we have Rolls-Royce. This is a manufacturer from Europe. No, I am not talking about the car manufacturer as many are aware of. This giant is the world's second largest engine manufacturer. Yes, Rolls-Royce, the jet engine manufacturer. Rolls-Royce started with the Rolls-Royce RB23 Welland jet engine, which was also Britain's first jet engine. The RB23 came into existence in early 1940s and was the brainchild of well-known Frank Whittle, who can be credited for the invention of the jet engine itself. If you are familiar with aviation, you are very well aware about the Concorde, the supersonic dream of every aviator. Well, the engines on the Concorde were co-developed by Rolls-Royce and Snecma, which was the Rolls-Royce Snecma Olympus 593, a rare commercial afterburning turbojet. The Rolls-Royce RB211 family are the early turbofans of the company and powered variants of the famous airliner such as the Boeing 747, 757, 767, and the extraordinary Lockheed L-1011 Tristar. Rolls-Royce further refined the RB211 architecture and developed the new Trent series. The Trent 600 was the first to be developed in this series, but it wasn't the first to be available commercially, as the MD-11 Trent variant, the aircraft which was to be powered by the Trent 600, was abandoned. The Trent 600s were then converted to Trent 700, powered the Airbus A330. Rolls-Royce then went on to build further variants in the Trent lineup, powering the Airbus A340, A350, A380, Boeing 777 and Boeing 787. The latest Trent is the Trent XWB, exclusively powering the Airbus A350. Now at number 3 we have Pratt & Whitney. This is also an engine manufacturer from the United States. It is the part of the big three aero engine manufacturer included next to General Electric and Rolls-Royce. Pratt & Whitney also have a rich history dating back to 1925, where Frederick Reinschler set out to open an aviation company and persuaded Pratt & Whitney Machine Tool Company to provide funding and location to start the development of aircraft engines. This was the start of Pratt & Whitney Aircraft Company. 
first engine to come out of the new company was a 9 cylinder R1340 WASP radial engine, which generated 420 horsepower. The R1340 was a big success and attracted 200 orders from the US Navy. The WASP developed into a series of engines itself and is still in operation. Pratt & Whitney then started developing the J-series of turbojet engines, which found application mostly in military aircraft. One of these famous engines was the Pratt & Whitney J58, which powered the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. Pratt & Whitney also developed the JT turbofan series, which consists of the glorious JT-8D, which powered the 737-100 and 200, 727-DC9 and the MD-80. More widely used were the JT-90, which was the first high-bypass jet engine to power a wide-body airliner found on the ancient Airbus A300, A310, Boeing 767, DC-10 and the early Boeing 747. The successor of the JT-90 is the Pratt & Whitney 4000. The most recent from Pratt & Whitney is the PW1000G geared turbofan jet engines available on the Airbus A320neo and the Embraer E2 series. Now at number 4 we have CFM International. CFM International is a joint venture between the American GE Aviation and Safran Engine of France. CFM International was founded back in 1976 and is headquartered in Cincinnati of United States. In early 1970s, Snecma, now Safran, was looking to develop an engine in the 10-ton thrust class with a high bypass ratio, which would cut costs by 20% compared to the then-industry standard JT-8 engine. This was the beginning of the M56 project from Snecma. Snecma sought a partner to tackle the American market and in the end, it was none other than GE Aviation, who were on the same track as well. This venture led to the development of the CFM-56, which was derived from GE's CF-6 and Safran's M-56 engine. The CFM-56 is a high-bypass turbofan engine that can be seen on the A320 family, the A340s, 737s and McDonnell Douglas DC-8. The CFM-56 had a shaky start and was on the verge of being dissolved, but now has become the world's best-selling aircraft engine. The successor of the best-selling engine is now the CFM Leap series, which is powering the new narrow bodies of the market, such as the Airbus A320neo, 737 MAX and the Comac 919. There are many more manufacturer and joint ventures such as IAE which produce the V2500 engine. Then we have the Engine Alliance Group which produce the GP7000 series, Safran from the French and many more. The list goes on. Do let us know your favorite engine manufacturer down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Do like, share, subscribe and ring the notification bell for great aviation content coming up. Till next time, be curious and keep your eyes on the sky.